Right, okay, here we are. I'm back. And look, I've got a hat. How cool is this? It's my official production line hat. Um, because we're going to be at EGX, uh, which is a big show in um, Birmingham uh, coming up. So I have stupid things like that and stickers. Stickers. Um, and there'll be badges and all kinds of other other stuff. And I have a bright white jacket with production line written on. So you, you won't be able to miss me if you happen to go to EGX. Hopefully you won't be able to miss me. Um, so let's have a look at the state of the game. I have hopefully quite a big factory here. Uh, I might talk a little bit today about like technical stuff that's changed. Um, well, not changed, but optimization. But I'm going to sort of run through um, what's sort of coming up and going to be new. One of the new things, of course, is the 4x4. Um, which I think I'm going to call off-road. I'm not sure if I'm building any at the moment. Um, so I've, I've shown you the, the off-road <laughs> uh, before, but now it's it's kind of um, all the correct data is in there. And it has a new thing. It has bull bars, which I think are called bull bars everywhere. Um, oh, that's, that's one there, isn't it? Um, might have to just follow that one, that red one. Um, I'm not sure if they're called bull bars everywhere, but hopefully we're fitting them. So, blah, blah, blah. Where do I go? Oh, no, we're not. Eek. But these things, look, you can see there. The, the kind of stuff in case you hit a, well, bull or reindeer or whatever. Um, I think I'm actually banned in the UK because um, these sort of cars tended to be used by parents dropping their kids off at school and um, loads of kids were killed um, by these cars hitting them ironically because the parents drive them to keep their kids safe. But in fact, they're much more likely to be killed um, by one than um, uh, in a normal car. So, um, so I think they were banned because they're very dangerous if you hit someone. Uh, apparently, but I know that then you know they're not banned everywhere, and they're an iconic thing that are on these sort of off-road vehicles, aren't they? Uh, and this involved a bit of um, messing around actually, because this this was the first item that we put in the game that is only an option, um, even though you've researched it on a particular uh, style of car. So if I go here, you'll notice it doesn't even show up, and that's a new thing. So we'll be able to support um, some interesting stuff. Uh, one of the other things is if you have a spare wheel, um, I think I'm right and I've fixed this. Yeah, spare wheel. If we turn the spare wheel off, you, that spare wheel disappears. That That's a new thing as well because they're normally sort of bolted onto the back of these cars, mini trucks, whatever you call them. Um, something that you may notice has changed is that the cars look different. They look better. They look more glossy. There's a glossiness shader that we run on um, the cars to make them more shiny. Uh, you can turn this on and off under options. Um, blah, blah, blah. There is options. We've had to change options to add some stuff. So, so glossy cars and screen edge scrolling. And now we sort of turned on or off. So that's this business. It was causing some bugs for some people, which is why I've made it an option. Um, if I turn the glossiness off, it won't happen until I start a new game. Uh, but I think it looks better. If the reason it's an option is partly if you don't like it, but partly if it causes any like performance problems. But I don't think it will. Um, who knows? So other stuff. Looky here. Look. Pause. Pause. Look. Look. How exciting! Different leather. So um, this is what we call Nappa leather, which when you look into it, you see it on um, options in like car configurators. When you look into it, you realise it doesn't mean anything. Napa leather is just a term that means good. <laughs> it's kind of rubbish. Um, so it's not like from some specific animal or, or treated a certain way. It's just like the highest quality leather. So we've given it that different colouring. Um, and that's an option, and it's a very expensive option. Um, because what we're trying to do, and I may have managed it here, is yeah get expensive cars eventually we'll have a luxury but we want some real crazy engine um, upgrades here so some of the prices changed as well um, so if I uh, I'll demonstrate this this is my, my most expensive car at the moment so I want to clear compact um, so if we look here what is it that went up a lot 
Um, the LED headlights and Xenon headlights, they went up a lot. Um, ah, yes, I, I remember what it is. Um, aluminium body changed. That's the wrong number, actually. And it's because I've changed it and then loaded in a game. So that will eventually change. Um, if we go down here to the start of my production line. Um, where is it? It's like the roll cage bit or something, isn't it? Drive shaft, rear axle. Um, I think I'd know how my own game works much better than this. The undercarriage? I don't think it is. Somewhere there's aluminium body as um, an option. I think it might. Oh, it's body shell, isn't it? Is it body shell? Is it body shell? Yeah, it is aluminium body. If you have an aluminium body now, you need loads of aluminium, which is a new resource, and it's very expensive. Well, it's it's a lot more expensive than steel. And I checked; it is a lot more expensive than steel. Um, so, an aluminium body is now worth a lot to the value of a car, and it's something you're only going to put on high-end cars. Whereas previously, it was a silly little option that I frankly forgot that I left in. There's a few other changes to resources and stuff. If I go to uh, voice recognition, um, I can't remember where that is. Is that dashboard or electronics? Um, blah, blah, blah. Voice recognition, yeah. So we're currently fitting a fairly ordinary car. We have um, some new requirements here. If you, ha if you do voice recognition, you need a microphone, uh, which costs more money. Um, and there was something else. What was the, o what was the other thing? Looks at notes. What have we added? Speakers. Yeah, if you do in-car um, music, you need speakers. I think that's a dashboard thing, isn't it? I can't even remember now. It's terrible, isn't it? Is that electronics? In-car music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and oh, that must be a super cheap, um, super cheap car. Um, yeah, so we've got some new resources, which brings me onto this excitement. Um, if we go to um, a supply stockpile. Um, I'll show you. So we've got some new stuff. We have Nappa leather. That's not used yet. Uh, microphone is a new thing. Nappa leather seats is a new thing. They are different. Um, blah, blah, blah. Speakers are a new thing. Um, aluminium is a new thing. Just at the top, it's, it's like ingots of aluminium. There we go. Um, so uh, kind of a bunch of new stuff. But interestingly, that takes us to here. How exciting the supply stockpile. Um, so let's just add a few items, I don't know what. Um, loads of people have asked for this, you've probably already spotted it if you want it. Um, but look, we have the configure imports thing, where you can say um, only get air uh, only get tyres that are local, for example, um, that you have made. Local means that you've made it in the factory rather than bought it in. It's more efficient, quicker and cheaper. Uh, and we haven't had this before. Um, it doesn't work yet. <laughs> Because all I've done is the user interface for it. So the rest of today, after I've done this video, uh, I'm going to work on um, actually hooking it up so that it actually works. And we've already got this. Um, you'll recognize this. If I go to a slot, if I go to like fit wheels and configure imports, I can already do this um, here. And, th and that all works and, and you've probably used that. But what um, the problem is, um, that only works for stuff that you import from an importer, from an import socket like this, or not. Um, it doesn't affect whether or not it'll get it from a supply stockpile, it, it, it still will. So, um, people have wanted the option to configure where the supply stockpile gets its stuff from. Um, so with this change, you'll be, have, you'll be able to have supply stockpiles, make loads of stuff locally and hardly use the importers and it'll be much more efficient. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, that was something people re requested a lot and I'm still working on. Uh, so that means that um, we've got a few researchy things have probably changed. Um, I changed some icons as well uh, to make them kind of like more obvious. Mostly in tech, I think, isn't it? Yeah, so ball bars, we got a picture of the vehicle, which I thought was the best way of showing that it only applies to that vehicle. Um, and we probably change some other icons here. So Nappa leather seats is a new thing. Um, blah, 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 blah. Income Music now has this icon. Voice recognition now has this icon. Aluminium body. We've got some new art and that's cool. 
So, um, I was going to talk about, um, because people quite like the technical stuff that I talk about, so I thought I'd explain, um, it shouldn't go on too long, I will explain technically how I sped up the game this week um, in sort of code terms. So there's a bit of a, a speed up which you'll get in the next version. One of the areas that takes a lot of time in terms of processing the game is pathfinding. And the pathfinding is mostly for these resources. So for example, this chip here is going from somewhere to somewhere and there is a very complicated arrangement of overhead lines. And it has to work out the path to go on, given that I can do that. And eventually these will either reroute, there you go, they've just rerouted around it. That involves a lot of work, that involves a lot of processing work um, to work out the path. And the algorithm we use for that is called A star, which is the most common one. Now, I massively sped up the route finding this week. And the way I did it was by caching. Um, now, caching is basically something you do in code where you just store data that you, that you need and you know you're going to need again. And one of the steps that happens literally millions of times a second in the game when we're doing the pathfinding is looking at a particular tile like here when I'm calculating a route and thinking can I go this direction on a conveyor, can I go that direction, can I go this way, can I go that way. In order to do that you need to grab those four tiles and for each of them you need to go is there a conveyor there and therefore can I go in that direction, can I calculate that as a potential route. Um, that sounds like it won't take very long and it kind of doesn't because the compiler optimizes this stuff but what you're doing is saying, um, give me the game object. From the game object, give me the factory. Now I've got the factory, here is a pointer, um, the address basically, of this tile and a direction, for example, northwest. Give me the tile that is northwest of me. Now do you have a slot? Um, and you can kind of crunch that down with compiler optimizations, but it, it still involves some code of, uh, the game checking, well, do we have a tile here? Um, or are we on the edge of the map? Is it external, like one of these tiles, in which case we don't care? Um, and what is the address of that tile? So you need to do that, and you need to do that millions of times a second. So I just cached it. Um, I, I kind of spotted that I was doing that a lot, an enormous amount, when you calculate um, uh, paths. Because we've got hundreds of things going, and they have to keep validating their paths in case I either do that, or possibly more interestingly, I do that. The minute I've done that, all of the paths are invalid. Every path in the game is invalid because we don't know whether or not that's a quicker route. So anyway, to speed this up, like I say, I, I've cached the result. So what I do now is when I create any tile in the world, um, I say, what is the tile to the, to the northeast, the southeast, the southwest, the northwest of me? And I store that in an array. So when I do the pathfinding stuff, I don't have to go asking other objects which tile it is, doing calculations, is it external, is there a tile, am I on the edge of the map, I've just got the address of it. So that means each tile um, keeps in it the memory address of four other tiles. But it doesn't matter because PCs have loads of RAM and you know there's not a million tiles. And even if there was, um, that would be tiny. If there were like a hundred million tiles, it might make a difference, but, but there aren't. Um, because we can't process everything else that quick. Um, so anyway, um, you know that's one of the optimizations we made. This, uh, funnily enough, the, the glossiness of the cars. If you've been playing the game a long time, you might have um, remembered that they looked like this at one point, and it went away, and I didn't even notice. And the reason it went away is an optimization that I did um, to bunch up the drawing of this stuff, which meant I was skipping the bit of code that says draw this glossy. Um, what we do to, to make it glossy, um, interestingly, is just to kind of exaggerate the colours. So if we're above a certain colour threshold, we kind of like multiply how bright it is. Um, and if it's below that threshold, um, we, we, we do the opposite. <laughs> um, but we do it in a linear fashion. Um, so it's, it's not just a simple thing, otherwise you get what you call a um, sort of threshold problem where it looks sort of two-tone. Um, it's quite a simple little shader um, to do, and it does make it look nicer. I may exaggerate it if you get a polished paintwork car. I think that might kind of be fun. 
Um, so anyway, so that's um, that's what I've been working on. That uh, supply stockpile stuff should be in soon, and the off-road cars will be in soon. I also fixed a bug. You may have come across this. Only one person reported it. Um, it used to be, if you looked in here, the sales per hour was always zero or one. <laughs> it was a bug. Sorry about that. It's 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 correct now, and that also um, goes through to this. If you if you look at the um, sales of a car, this number here was always nonsense, um, and it's it's corrected now. Um, we also have more achievements on the way, but I'll probably talk about them next time. Anyway, this is still production line. Um, I'm interested to know if anyone thinks it should be more expensive. Um, we haven't changed the price since it went into early access, um, and I don't know. I um, I want it to be a good deal. But I don't want it to be underpriced, obviously. Um, I'm kind of interested to know what people think about that. And if you like the new glossy cars or you don't like them. Um, and if you want me to keep talking about technical stuff or not. Because I can get very boring on these topics. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.